Part One, Chapter Four of Eight Hundred Leagues on the Amazon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Eight Hundred Leagues on the Amazon, by Jules Verne. Part One. THE GIANT RAFT CHAPTER Four, HESITATION Manuel was in love with the sister of his friend Benito, and she was in love with him. Each was sensible of the other's worth, and each was worthy of the other. When he was no longer able to mistake the state of his feelings toward Minha, Manuel had opened his heart to Benito. Manuel, my friend, he had immediately answered the enthusiastic young fellow. You could not do better than wish to marry my sister. Leave it to me. I will commence by speaking to the mother, and I think I can promise that you will not have long to wait for her consent. Half an hour afterward he had done so. Benito had nothing to tell his mother which she did not know. Yaquita had already divined the young people's secret. Before ten minutes had elapsed, Benito was in the presence of Minha. They had but to agree. There was no need for much eloquence. At the first words, the head of the gentle girl was laid on her brother's shoulder, and the confession, I am so happy, was whispered from her heart. The answer almost came before the question. That was obvious. Benito did not ask for more. There could be little doubt as to Juan Garral's consent, but if Yaquita and her children did not at once speak to him about the marriage, it was because they wished at the same time to touch on a question which might be more difficult to solve. That question was, where should the wedding take place? Where should it be celebrated? In the humble cottage which served for the village church? Why not? Juan Yaquita had there received the nuptial benediction of the Padre Pasaña, who was then the curate of Iquitos Parish. At that time, as now, there was no distinction in Brazil between the civil and religious acts, and the registers of the mission were sufficient testimony to a ceremony which no officer of the civil power was entrusted to attend to. Juan Garau would probably wish the marriage to take place at Iquitos, with grand ceremonies in the attendance of the whole staff of the fazenda, but, if such was to be his idea, he would have to withstand a vigorous attack concerning it. Manuel. Minha said to her betrothed, If I was consulted in the matter, we should not be married here, but at Pará. Madame Valdez is an invalid, she cannot visit Iquitos, and I should not like to become her daughter without knowing and being known by her. My mother agrees with me in thinking so. We should like to persuade my father to take us to Belém. Do you not think so? To this proposition Manuel had replied by pressing Minha's hand. He had also had a great wish for his mother to be present at his marriage. Benito had approved the scheme without hesitation, and it was only necessary to persuade Juan Garral. And hence on this day the young men had gone out hunting in the woods, so as to leave Yaquita alone with her husband. In the afternoon these two were in the large room of the house. Juan Garral, who had just come in, was half reclining on a couch of plaited bamboos, when Yaquita, a little anxious, came and seated herself beside him. To tell Jean of the feelings which Manuel entertained toward his daughter was not what troubled her. The happiness of Minha could not but be assured by the marriage, and Jean would be glad to welcome to his arms the new son whose sterling qualities he recognized and appreciated. But to persuade her husband to leave the fazenda, Yaquita felt to be a very serious matter. In fact, since Juan Garral, then a young man, had arrived in the country, he had never left it for a day. Though the sight of the Amazon, with its waters gently flowing to the east, invited him to follow its course, though Juan every year sent rafts of wood to Manaus, to Belém, and the sea-coast of Pará, though he had seen each year Benito leave after his holidays to return to his studies, yet the thought seemed never to have occurred to him to go with him. The products of the farm, 
of the forest and of the fields, the fazender sold on the spot. He had no wish, either with thought or look, to go beyond the horizon which bounded his Eden. From this it followed that for twenty-five years Juan Garau had never crossed the Brazilian frontier. His wife and daughter had never set foot on Brazilian soil. The longing to see something of that beautiful country of which Benito was often talking was not wanting, nevertheless. Two or three times Yaquita had sounded her husband in the matter, but she had noticed that the thought of leaving the fazenda, if only for a few weeks, brought an increase of sadness to his face. His eyes would close, and in a tone of mild reproach he would answer, Why leave our home? Are we not comfortable here? And Yaquita, in the presence of the man whose act of kindness and unchangeable tenderness rendered her so happy, had not the courage to persist. This time, however, there was a serious reason to make it worth while. The marriage of Mia afforded an excellent opportunity, it being so natural for them to accompany her to Belém, where she was going to live with her husband. She would there see and learn to love the mother of Manuel Valdez. How could Juan Garau hesitate in the face of so praiseworthy a desire? Why, on the other hand, did he not participate in this desire to become acquainted with her, who was to be the second mother of his child? Yaquita took her husband's hand, and with that gentle voice which had been to him all the music of his life, Juan, she said, I am going to talk to you about something which we ardently wish, and which will make you as happy as we are. What is it about, Yaquita? asked Juan. Manuel loves your daughter. He is loved by her. And in this union they will find the happiness. At the first words of Yaquita, Juan Garau had risen, without being able to control a sudden start. His eyes were immediately cast down, and he seemed to designedly avoid the look of his wife. "'What is the matter with you?' asked she. "'Mia, to get married,' murmured Juan. "'My dear,' said Yaquita, feeling somewhat hurt, "'have you any objection to make to the marriage? Have you not for some time noticed the feelings which Manuel has entertained toward our daughter?' "'Yes, and a year since.' And Juan sat down without finishing his thoughts. By an effort of his will, he had again become master of himself. The unaccountable impression which had been made upon him disappeared. Gradually his eyes returned to meet those of Yaquita, and he remained thoughtfully looking at her. Yaquita took his hand. Juan, she said, have I been deceived? Had you no idea that this marriage would one day take place? and that it would give her every chance of happiness? Yes, answered Juan. All, certainly. But, Yaquita, this wedding, this wedding that we are both thinking of, when is it coming off? Shortly? It will come off when you choose, Juan. And it will take place here, at Iquitos? This question obliged Yaquita to enter on the other matter which she had at heart. She did not do so, however, without some hesitation, which was quite intelligible. Juan, she said after a moment's silence, listen to me. Regarding this wedding, I have got a proposal which I hope you will approve of. Two or three times during the last twenty years I have asked you to take me and my daughter to the provinces of the lower Amazon, and to Pará, where we have never been. The cares of the fazenda, the works which have required your presence have not allowed you to grant our request. To absent yourself even for a few days would then have injured your business. But now everything has been successful beyond your dreams, and if the hour of repose has not yet come for you, you can at least for a few weeks get away from your work. Juan Garral did not answer, but Yaquita felt his hand tremble in hers, as though under the shock of some sorrowful recollection. At the same time, a half-smile came to her husband's lips, a mute invitation for her to finish what she had begun. Juan, she continued, here is an occasion which we shall never see again in this life. Minha is going to be married away from us, and is going to leave us. It is the first sorrow which our daughter has caused us, 
and my heart quails when I think of the separation which is so near. But I should be content if I could accompany her to Belém. Does it not seem right to you, even in other respects, that we should know her husband's mother, who is to replace me, and to whom we are about to entrust her? Added to this, Minha does not wish to grieve Madame Valdez by getting married at a distance from her. When we were married, Juan, if your mother had been alive, would you not have liked her to be present at your wedding? At these words of Yaquita, Juan made a movement which he could not repress. My dear, continued Yaquita, with Minha, with our two sons Benito and Manuel, with you, how I should like to see Brazil and to journey down this splendid river, even to the provinces on the seacoast through which it runs. It seems to me that the separation would be so much less cruel. As we came back we should revisit our daughter in her house, with her second mother. I would not think of her as gone I knew not where. I would fancy myself much less a stranger to the doings of her life. This time Juan had fixed his eyes on his wife, and looked at her for some time without saying anything. What ailed him? Why this hesitation to grant her request, which was so just in itself, to say, yes, when it would give such pleasure to all who belonged to him? His business affairs could not afford a sufficient reason. A few weeks of absence would not compromise matters to such a degree. His manager would be able to take his place without any hitch in the fazenda. And yet, all this time, he hesitated. Yaquita had taken both her husband's hands in hers, and pressed them tenderly. Juan, she said, it is not a mere whim that I am asking you to grant. No, for a long time I have thought over the proposition I have just made to you, and if you consent, it will be the realization of my most cherished desire. Our children know why I am now talking to you. Minha, Benito, Manuel, all ask this favor, that we should accompany them. We would all rather have the wedding at Belém than at Iquitos. It will be better for your daughter, for her establishment, for the position which she will take at Belém, and that she should arrive with her people, and appear less of a stranger in the town, in which she will spend most of her life. Juan Garau leaned on his elbows. For a moment he hid his face in his hands, like a man who had to collect his thoughts before he made answer. There was evidently some hesitation which he was anxious to overcome, even some trouble which his wife felt, but could not explain. A secret battle was being fought under that thoughtful brow. Yaquita got anxious, and almost reproached herself for raising the question. Anyhow, she was resigned to what Juan should decide. If the expedition would cost too much, she would silence her wishes. She would never more speak of leaving the fazenda, and never ask the reason for the inexplicable refusal. Some minutes passed. Juan Garral rose. He went to the door and did not return. Then he seemed to give a last look on that glorious nature, on that corner of the world where for twenty years of his life he had met with all his happiness. Then, with slow steps, he returned to his wife. His face bore a new expression, that of a man who had taken a last decision, and with whom irresolution had ceased. "'You are right,' he said in a firm voice. "'The journey is necessary. When shall we start?' "'Ah, Juan, my Juan!' cried Yaquita in her joy. "'Thank you for me. Thank you for them!' and tears of affection came to her eyes, as her husband clasped her to his heart. At this moment happy voices were heard outside at the door of the house. Manuel and Benito appeared an instant after at the threshold, almost at the same moment as Minha entered the room. "'Children, your father consents,' cried Yaquita. "'We are going to Belém.' With a grave face and without speaking a word, Juan Garau received the congratulations of his son and the kisses of his daughter. "'And what date, father?' asked Benito. "'Have you fixed for the wedding?' "'Date?' asked Juan. "'Date? We shall see. We will fix it at Belém.' "'I am so happy! I am so happy!' 
repeated Minha, as she had done on the day when she had first known of Manuel's request. We shall now see the Amazon in all its glory throughout its course through the provinces of Brazil. Thanks, father. And the young enthusiast, whose imagination was already stirred, continued to her brother and to Manuel, Let us be off to the library. Let us get hold of every book and every map that we can find, which will tell us anything about this magnificent river system. Don't let us travel like blind folks. I want to see everything and know everything about this king of the rivers of the earth. End of chapter 4 Hesitation Recording by Scott Robbins